Thank you for joining me today. My name is Carrie Waltz. I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. Sometimes a quote makes a profound difference for me. And this past week at Wild Acres, when I was visiting some friends, Clay Turner told me that my work reminds him of Mary Oliver. And a quote from her is what he shared with me. Pay attention, be astonished, and tell someone. So simple, but yet so profound. I was honored that my work reminded him of that quote. And I hope what I shared today will help you pay attention, be astonished, and tell someone with some of the work that you create. I think that's a wonderful thing to remember and to help you slow down, be quiet, and just listen to the world around you. One morning when I was at their home, I went out with my cup of coffee and sat by the creek and just listened to the world around me and watched and observed. And it, it was just a beautiful way to welcome the day. So I hope you take time wherever you are to do that. Go out, look, listen, pay attention, and then tell someone, either in writing or in picture form. I hope you have a wonderful day and stay with me as I show you some things that I created this week and things that inspired him. I started off with making a title page for where I began my watercolor journey at Wild Acres this year and made a title. I'll put in a picture of how I messed up that title, even though I wrote it in pencil first, and I came back with pen and miscopied it, but I used this Signo, oh, there we go, Signo Elite Uniball pen. It's one of the best opaque pens that I have on the market or that I know of on the market and it's kind of like a teeny tiny whiteout pen so I corrected the lettering and you'll be able to see that with what I insert. This was one of the things I did sitting outside on the porch area. The Elegant Writer is what created this and even though I know a lot about art I still make a mistake here and there. Actually a lot. I learn a lot by mistakes and you would think that what I was looking at was two branches with three pine cones. No, actually there was one branch and it had a shadow on it. It was casting a shadow and so when I sketched off the shadow, I actually gave the shadow the texture that I gave the branch. And sometimes you need to ask your students, hmm, something's wrong with this. What do you think? She said, your shadow has too much texture. Texture, And I said, oh my God, you are so right. I know that. Why do I know that? See, it takes on the shadow. The shadow will take on the surface of what it's on, but it doesn't have the texture of the object. And, you know, I knew that. Why did I draw it that way? I don't know. I'm not paying attention. So stop what you're doing. Don't paint when no one's home. That's a quote from Karen Margulis. Yeah, she said, don't paint when no one's home. So I wasn't really thinking. So what I did is I created a second branch and I added another pine cone and then I cast the shadow that would make sense with what was there. So learning from my students is always a good thing. Okay. There was a peach that sat on my desk for quite some time and I was waiting for it to get ripe enough to eat. So I wrote a little <laughs> somewhat of a poem. Peach. Fruit. Fuzzy. Juicy. Waiting to be painted. Beckoning. Pleasing. Tempting. Peach. And I had too much space down here, so I added the word anticipation because that's what I was anticipating. The way I get this fuzzy look is wet on wet. So wet your painting with wet paint and then throw in other colors, not literally throw paint in other colors, so that they bleed and create a soft edge. The stem area was dry when I painted it, so it has a hard edge. The outside has a hard edge, but everything else interior throughout here was painted wet on wet. This was in honor of Jean, who gave us all some Dove chocolate, so Ode to Dove. You can pause and read this if you want. But sometimes adding metallics are fun. If you can see the metallic paint as I tilt this, I added that here. And I had a pen that was a gold metallic gel pen. So I added that on uh, the red wrapper. So the red here re was um, showing up in the shadow. So be sure when, when you look at the color of your shadow, it reflects what's near it and so this red wrapper that was open a red wrapper like this it was open would cast a red shadow so be sure to watch for things like that so thank you Jean for the chocolate these are blue mushrooms yes they are blue I believe they're uh, oh shoot I should have looked up the scientific name okay 
uh, one of my students actually found one, cut it in half, and had a cross section. It showed how blue it was, and she made a print of it on her sketchbooks. One of the favorite things that I do when I'm in Wild Acres is I walk down to the manager's home, and above her her home would be right down in right right down here if you were there in person. And if you look out beyond above her house, you can see Table Rock Mountain, and I believe this is Hawksville, Hawksville or Hawks Beak, and um, it was a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. So because it was so vibrant, I had to use my brighter colors on my watercolor selection and my traditional limited palette with my normal primaries just would not create the intensity that that did. I don't normally write as much as I do as I did on this entry, experiences with eating vegetables. And oh, my favorite thing was cowboy candy, pickled, pickled um, jalapenos is what it was, pickled jalapeno. It was wonderful. So I'm going to look up a recipe and I might have to try that. So yum, yum. So this was just two of the many, many vegetables that we enjoyed. The next day we went berry picking at a farm that had mm, 300 some odd plants. It, they were just luscious. I'll show you some pictures and include a few of those. But I had never heard of a shrub as in what you drink. It's a blueberry shrub. It's an old-fashioned, old-fashioned shrubs make refreshing drinks. So um, I had never heard of it. And there were two different ways to make it. This is a recipe for one of the ways. So if um, you want the recipe, it is quite delicious. And it doesn't have to be put with alcohol. You can put it with other things. But I never thought apple cider vinegar could taste so good. Yeah, can't stand the stuff normally. So painted the blueberries in honor of that memory and to document the recipe. And the other thing that we did a lot was collect specimens of moths that were found in the area. We did not kill any of these. They had already died, but we carefully picked them up, had them on an index card, and would pass them around so that we could work from life and paint them. This one obviously hasn't been painted yet, but I sketched it out. So not all of your journals will get finished on time, and sometimes you just have to come back and, and do it later. And this is another way I documented my second week of class and show you the rock study that we did together. So, well, actually we did a smaller one together. I did a I picked a section of this and blew it up so that we could study the rocks in the area. So I'm going to continue my journaling, and I did some others in a smaller journal and on separate sheets, but I don't have those with me, and I just wanted to share with you what I've been doing lately and to inspire you to hopefully, hopefully, be quiet, listen, write, paint, but pay attention, be astonished, and tell someone. If you've been one of my subscribers, thank you so much. I have been so, so, so amazed at the growth of my channel and so appreciative of you watching. And I will be working with more watercolor journaling, sketching in the future. I'm going to be sharing some of the ways I paint trees that was asked in a previous video that I shared. So get your watercolors out. Try something new. Don't worry about it looking perfect because it's just for you. It's just your memory. So I'll see you next week.